Your sketch of the grid should look like this. The x direction is to the right, as shown here, and the z direction points towards the top of the slide. Horizontally across, you can see alternating EZ and HY field components, just as we had in our one-dimensional code. Now we just also have EX field components between the HYs in the Z direction, so that we have alternating electric and magnetic field components in the Z direction. And then we can use the same central differencing approach in the Z direction, using HYs and EXs, as we did in the X direction, using HYs and EZs. To develop update equations for field components in a two-dimensional grid, we can start from Ampere's and Faraday's laws, just as we did for the 1D grid. First, let's consider Ampere's law for free space. So the current density J is just going to be equal to zero, and we'll have the curl of H is equal to epsilon DE DT. We need to first evaluate the curl of H. Here I've written out the curl of H. The two-dimensional model that we have chosen only allows for field components to change in the x and the z directions, meaning that the wave can only propagate in the x and z directions. As a result, all the partial derivatives with respect to y are going to be equal to zero. So this is equal to zero, and this is equal to zero. Also, in our two-dimensional grid, we are not solving for hx and hz components, so we can just ignore them and we can just set them equal to zero for convenience. Those components are not going to affect the wave propagation mode that we are modeling in our grid. So here this term is zero and that term is zero. So then all we are left with is x hat multiplied by minus dhy dz plus z hat dhy dx that's on the left side of Ampere's law. And then on the left side, that means we have an x hat and a y hat component on the left side of the equation. So on the right side of the equation, we must also have an x and a z hat component. So I'm going to write dex dt plus epsilon dez dt. Luckily, we can separately evaluate the x and z hat terms. I'm going to write the z hat component first. So we're going to have dhy dx is equal to epsilon dez dt. And for the second equation, we'll have mine, this is the x hat direction, dhy dz is equal to epsilon dex dt. Let's consider first this first equation. We need to approximate the partial derivatives using central differencing. To keep track of the spatial and the time indices, we will use n for the time step number and i as the x coordinate, just as we did for the one dimensional code. And now we will use k as the z coordinate. So a full 3D simulation we use i, j, and k for the x, y, and z directions. So since we're not solving for propagation in the y direction, we're just going to leave out this j index. According to the diagram that we drew earlier, if we want to evaluate this equation in a manner that depends only on values that are stored in the computer, we should evaluate this equation at integer i locations half integer k's, so I'll write that as k plus 0.5, and then at half integer in time indices, so at n plus 0.5. So for the left side, we'll get hy at n plus 0.5, and then according to our diagram, the hy's are at i plus 0.5 and k plus 0.5. And then we have, this is a spatial derivative in the x direction. So n is going to be the same. And I'm going to put i minus 0.5 here. 
and then we'll have the same k index, k plus 0.5. And that's divided by delta x. And this will be equal to epsilon, and we have ez at n plus 1. So we're going to center at the time derivative at n plus 0.5. So this um, ez is located at positions i and k plus 0.5 and subtract ez at n i k plus 0.5 and that's divided by delta t. Now we want to rearrange this equation so we can solve for a future field component. In this equation the future field component would be ez at time step n plus 1. After rearranging the equation to solve for that term, this is the equation that we end up with. Does this equation look familiar? It should because it's equivalent to the update equation we had for the easy field in our one-dimensional code. The only difference is that now we're going to solve this equation at all of the half integer k's in the grid, in addition to all of the i positions in the grid. Spend a minute now going through the same process to develop an update equation for the second equation we obtained from Ampere's law. This is for the x component, so we have minus dhy dz equals epsilon dex dt.